Whether you're traveling by car, truck, or motorcycle, California drivers who cross the state's bridges and toll roads are supposed to pay their fair share. But a surprising number of drivers are cheating the system. A clear coat spray called Photoblocker is helping many drivers avoid tolls and costly tickets. It gives a high gloss finish on your license plate. And what that does is it overexposes it to red light cameras. Distributor Sean Wang says the company that makes Photoblocker isn't trying to help people skirt the law. Instead, it hopes to give drivers a fighting chance against what he says is faulty photo flash technology. Officials acknowledge many drivers are not purposely trying to cheat the system. They say in many cases, trailer hitches or large license plate frames get in the way of toll cameras, preventing authorities from sending those drivers a ticket. When drivers use Photoblocker to obscure their license plates, the Bay Area Toll Authority showed us the blank images that result. When drivers use Photoblocker to obscure their license plates, the Bay Area Toll Authority showed us the blank images that result. State lawmakers such as Southern California's Mimi Walters says deliberately trying to evade a toll is illegal, and she says it's time to put the brakes on toll cheats. Right now, the toll roads down in my area are losing roughly a half a million dollars a month by people evading tolls. Walter says no one knows exactly how much money is lost due to photo blocker, but there's enough concern about it that a move is now underway in the state legislature to ban it. Drivers we talked with said they have mixed feelings about the proposed ban. I think they should, but people are going to find a way to get past it anyway. All of us have to pay. I mean, the, the, there's a reason that we're paying is for the upkeep of the bridge anyhow, so, you know, why should you cheat it out? Now, if the proposed ban makes it to the governor's desk and he signs it into law, authorities could face an even bigger challenge. Since Photoblocker is invisible to the naked eye, how would authorities enforce a ban on something they're unable to see? Authorities could face an even bigger challenge. Since Photoblocker is invisible to the naked eye, how would authorities enforce a ban on something they're unable to see? Sentinels are stirring dissent. Boo, boo. Flashes are the only clue the cameras caught cars speeding or running red lights. Confirmation arrives as a ticket in the mail with a $100 fine. Well, that's messed up. These cameras are even triggering key questions before Ohio's highest court. We're starting to lose our freedom to move around. At the very least, motorists say these devices are just plain unfair. I think we should get rid of them. For the past six months, Five on Your Side has been investigating red light cameras. And we found everything from the sophisticated electronics to the system that supports them. Red light cameras not only can make mistakes, they do. Let's start with Dave Hitala. He's a Five on Your Side videographer. Something's wrong with the whole system. Dave got a ticket in the mail. It stated he was speeding on Chester Avenue at 71st Street. Dave was cited for going 48 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone. This was wrong. And I'm, I'm willing to fight that. Along with the ticket, Dave got pictures showing his van. And the picture showed something else, another car that appeared to be going faster. I immediately could see that they had ticketed the wrong lane. Take a look. Here's the car in the first picture. Here it is in the second. No question, that car was going faster than Dave's van. Could the ticket be a mistake? We wanted to know for sure. To get answers, we went to Mr. Math. Meet Chris Butler, a math professor at Case Western University. We asked him if he could, well, do the math. If you know the distance and you know the time, you can calculate the speed. So Chris, that is Mr. Math, measured the location using markers from the pictures. I recorded the measurements. 33.25 feet. And? Divide by the 0.56 seconds. We have to multiply that times 3,600. Mr. Math determined Dave's real rate of speed. Dave Hitala was traveling 40 and a half miles per hour. Yes. And Mr. Math found the real speed for that car. 48 miles an hour. Dave brought our findings to court to challenge his ticket. It become pretty clear that it wasn't your vehicle that was speeding. He didn't have to argue much. The court admitted 
The ticket was issued to the wrong car in the wrong lane. Next case, same location, different problem. Meet Bill and Sue Faber, who live in Massillon. They say they haven't been in Cleveland for six months, but the city sent them this ticket. There was no way we could be in Cleveland. You have witnesses to that, ma'am? Yes, we do. Yet, Cleveland sent the ticket showing a car speeding. That's right, I said car. But the plate here belongs to a truck, the Faber's truck. We don't own a Todd Stratus. It appears Cleveland guessed and sent the ticket anyway. I thought we were always innocent till proven guilty. Now I'm guilty till I can prove myself innocent. After we got involved, the city backed off, writing this letter informing the Fabers the city of Cleveland made a mistake. Thank you. Hundreds of you have emailed and called. We listened. And we're just starting to call the red light cameras into question.